What's up, Malakas? We're starting off in the RS3 today. We are getting ready to go down to Chris Seabird's shop to check on Stavros' car. Uh, the wiring harness guy, Norbert, who flew in from Hungary, needed a few parts. And I also needed to bring down Stavros' spall fans so he could wire and time the fans with the standalone. So this way the standalone can trip on the fans just like a factory car and keep it where it's supposed to go. But as a surprise, we are going to go to, real quick before we start heading down, I'm going to head over to Harbor Freight. And, um, you know, Chris Seabird has a small personal little shop that he rents out for himself. And it's a side thing. He doesn't do it for a living. And a lot of people go there for him, you know, and, and he helps a lot of people out. He lets them use their lift or he helps them work on their cars. So, um, you know, he has Stavros' car down there. So instead of Norbert traveling all the way up to us in Lancaster, we brought the car there. So kind of Chris, Chris and his wife, Chris, as you guys saw in the last video, uh, opened up their doors to us and are letting us use their shop so he can wire. And then plus we can also install the fueling kit and all the, oh, you know what I also forgot? Crap. I forgot to grab Stavros' brake kit. His rear brake upgrade kit came in and I want to bring it back. Crap. Man, I feel stupid. All right, so I'm heading back real quick to pick up Stavros' uh, rear brake kit, which I'm only just a couple blocks away, luckily. But I'm going to head over to Harbor Freight, and what I wanted to do is get them a um, trans transmission stand kit. So if they just wanted to just, let's say if they have a car in the lift and they just want to pop down the transmission, which I'm sure Chris does a lot over there in his shop, he'll be able to. So it'll be kind of like a small gift from us to them, like a small token of our appreciation. Um, it's nothing crazy, it's nothing fancy, and I kind of, I, I remember him mentioning that he wanted to get one, and I had kind of thrown it to the side, like, oh, we'll get one for you, and this was like a month or two ago, and uh, I think he thinks I forgot. So we're going to surprise him today, and we're going to go get it. And we're home. Let me go back and go grab I, the one thing I wasn't supposed to forget, and I forgot. I'm going to go grab it now. Here, if you got so yeah, so now we got Stavros' rear brake upgrade kit that we're going to install while we're down there. Well, I think I'm going to install while I'm down there and uh, helps the, get Stavros' car together. So today, for today's agenda, we have, we're ripping out Stavros' old factory fuel system, which is primarily the factory lines. And then in combination, it's the inline 450 that the previous owner had installed kind of within all the OEM lines. So we're gonna rip all that stuff out and get it ready for when Sean's brushless fuel kit arrives uh, later today or tomorrow. I'll come back Wednesday morning or if not uh, Thursday and install that fueling system. And we'll bring you guys along for the ride. Anyway, on our way to Harbor Freight, you know, a uh, really good resource for uh, affordable kind of car, car stuff, tools and whatnot, and we use it. And a lot of people kind of shame using Harbor Freight, you should buy a Snap-on, but apparently these guys never visited a Snap-on truck. That stuff's really expensive. So let me kind of clarify with that statement. So for torque wrenches, really crucial items like breaker bars, we go Snap-on, we go Craftsman, but there's a lot of great stuff at Harbor Freight for really affordable prices. And uh, they've done us real good. Our engine stands it from uh, Harbor Freight, our our hoist is from Harbor Freight. There's a lot of smaller other tools like measuring devices that we get that are pretty accurate and work pretty well from Harbor Freight. So really no complaint. Anyway, let's go over to Harbor Freight and uh, let's go snag them a transmission stand. Now, I have about a quarter tank of gas. That should be enough to get us down below so I can fill up an E85. So I'm in the RS, and as you know, she's running on E70. Primarily that's give or take, depending on how you measure it, because uh, we're only running currently E70. That's about, I'd say 11, 11 and a half worth gallons of E85, and about two, two and a half of 91. And it depends also on the concentration of the mix. So hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully it works out. I think we found the gift. So there's 
Chris yeah. uses like old school like piece of plank of wood, like a two by four, but a really large one. And this would be really good as a safety stand that we can get for him. And then, so it's really not that expensive, but I think it would be a nice gesture. And then he does a lot of oil changes, and I'm sure he has like a way to collect the oil. But this would be a little bit more legit. So I figured this and the safety stand should be a nice little gift to him to kind of say thank you for letting us use his shop. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna grab them. We're gonna grab both. So now we gotta go pay. Luckily, Harbor Freight is not even that's that packed. It's 11 o'clock. See if there's a line. Nope. No line. All right, I'm gonna pay for this stuff and then we'll fast forward in the car. All right, guys. All right, so we got the little surprise for Chris and Chris. Picked up a little safety stand, like I said before. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> when we were there last time and we were helping uh, Chris put together, uh, I think it was Rudy's car, he was using this giant plank of like two by four that was unadjustable. He had kind of like cut it perfectly to kind of mess around and do whatever he wanted. And, um, and you know, we always thought maybe, maybe we should get Chris something. So we picked up two little things, a little oil drain, little canister, so he could do oil changes, seal it up, and then go dump the oil at whatever repository he chooses. And then like a little safety stand hoist. Nothing crazy, just a little thank you to kind of say, hey, thanks for letting us use your shop, thanks for being friends, so on and so forth. We figured it'd be a kind gesture. Anyway, Stavro called me, he ordered brake pads. I gotta run by Napa and go pick it up. So I'm gonna run by Napa, go scoop up the pads, and then we're gonna shoot down to Chris's shop. But I have a quarter tank left, and there's no E85 at all in Lancaster. So I think I have enough fuel to, um, to make it to the Roxford location to get E85. So I should be okay. I'll go there, fill up, and then shoot over to Chris's shop. <clears throat> anyway, um, I know you guys don't wanna see time lapses of me driving all the time, but we'll update you guys as soon as we get to Chris's shop or when I get some E85. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a plan. Nothing really exciting going on here today, um, but I gotta go pick up those pads. So I have Stavros' brake kit, I got the fan kit, I gotta go rip out the stock fuel lines, I got the two gifts for Chris, I gotta go get the pads. Yeah, I think I got everything in order. I probably forgot something, that's usually what happens is I forget everything. And then I remember like two minutes before I get to my destination and then of course it's way out of the way. So be prepared for that, that's more than likely gonna happen. Anyway, so we're using a new baffled mic with a windsock on it. So let me know how that sounds. Do you guys hear the car a little bit better? Do you guys hear me a little bit better than in the previous videos? You know, on the last video we did, we noticed that the, the mics were a bit muffled. So we got some new mics in and it kind of sounds better to us. Let us know what you guys think. Let us go, you know, hey, listen, yo, we can hear you. Or hey, George, we don't care because we don't want to hear you talk. I'd accept that wholeheartedly as well. But let me know in the comments below if you guys like this mic setup a little bit better if it helps bring out the sound of the cars that we're driving and what we're doing i'll be using it on the gopro footage on the inside of the garage too anyway we'll catch you guys as soon as we get to chris's shop hit somebody hopefully i don't <laughs> excuse that i almost missed the exit but anyway we need to get some e85 and uh, pre mix it a little bit with some 91 and Roxford Street's our best source that we go to. So far, it's been holding pretty strong with 85 content throughout the whole year, so it's pretty much the only place that I go to. And my fuel light just came on. Yep, I know, I know you want fuel. I'm gonna get you some fuel. Take your time, lady. Let's get some fuel.
premix of 85 and 91. Now it roughly comes out to the same same science. I kind of have it down pat, but I always double check, but I'm not gonna check now because the fuel hasn't got a proper, I guess, amount of time to kind of uh, to mix. So I'm gonna drive around very slowly and carefully and then I'll check it once I get to Chris's shop. Anyway, journey continues to Chris's shop. We should be there in like 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, so we finally got here. We ran to Harbor Freight, we ran and got some E85, so we're full on fuel, but now we're here finally in Chris's shop. And of course, without hesitation, Norbert, I don't know if you guys see through the tinted glass, Norbert's already hard at work. What's up? As they say, doing the damn thing, as Stavro would say. Wiring, wires everywhere. That shit scares me, fuck wiring. But anyway, we're here. Chris is here. Not the other Chris, but this Chris, if you guys remember from the last video. Hello. But look at that, hard at work. So we brought Stavros' fans, we brought Stavros' rear brake kit. Um, as soon as Norbert kind of finishes up, we'll get started on ripping out the stock fuel lines. And then hopefully the fuel kit comes in either later today or tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll get this girl buttoned up. And again, you know, she's got a lot more stuff to get done. Stavros still needs intercooler fab, but at least the harness, the standalone, everything will be wired in. It'll be somewhat functional. We can maybe even hear her fire up. And then uh, we'll get this girl out of here. And then... Um, back up uh, to us in Lancaster and then get the intercooler stuff kind of knocked out. But it's getting there, guys. It's getting there. Stavros' car is looking real good. Really jealous that his my CCWs look a lot better on his car than mine. I think it pops really well, especially with the front end being all polished. So you can imagine he's got the aluminum mirrors, he's got the wheels, and then the whole front end, it just pops. Very, very jealous. Not because it's a 12 valve, but because it looks really, really good. Should have been a 24 valve, I think. But he's got a 12 valve in there. Anyway, we'll get started. We'll update you guys as you go. And then we'll throw some time-lapse footage in there too. Stavro may or may not be joining us later in the afternoon, but he may. Uh, we'll see what time he gets off of work. But let's get started. All right, Malakas. Here in Chris's shop, and we're here with Stavros' A4. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff to get done, as I kind of mentioned and alluded to as, I, as soon as I got here. But right now, what we're going to be working on is an oil pressure fitting that we're going to have to adapt on the oil filter housing on the VR6. It's going to look something like... Let me see if I got it in my pocket. It's going to be something like this. So we're going to have to adapt this, so this way the VEMS harness can read the oil pressure to the ECU that they're going to be running. So... Um, we're gonna have to take off the front radiator, take off the back of the alternator. We actually damaged, it looks like, a connector during install. So luckily Norbert said he's gonna kind of fix it up and hook us up on it. So we're gonna remove the radiator, remove the alternator, gauge what kind of adapter we need this to tap into the oil filter housing. We'll make a run real quick to Napa or to a local parts store, and then we'll get this situated. And then we'll continue on with a nice little time lapse. We are, we are dreaming in the dark We are nothing more than dust Search but you stay lost We are, we are reaching for the stars But we're making this too hard So essentially, we have to take Let me see if I can get you guys a clear picture There we go. So there's the oil filter housing, and there is the old sensor that we're going to be removing, which I already unscrewed. Me taking this bad boy off, and we're going to match the threads on this one, common to that pressure sensor, which might be the same. So we might get lucky, or we might not, depending on the Greek luck that we have. So we'll match it up so this way the VEMS harness can kind of read oil pressure and Stavro doesn't have to worry about that stuff. So we've taken basically off the front end, the alternator like I mentioned just before, Norbert's going to fix the connector on there. I think it was probably me who broke it, but we'll just blame Stavro for now. He broke the connector. So Norbert's going to fix it for us and then we'll hook the alternator back up. We'll hook the radiator back up, I'll run the fans and then Norbert himself will do all the wiring for the fans to the VEMS ECU. Anyway, miniature, uh, miniature updates, small, steady progress, but uh, slow and steady wins the race. After all, it is a 12 valve, right? Talk to you guys later. All right, so we're back, picked up the fittings that Stavro needed for his now VEMS oil pressure sensor. We're gonna attach it to the oil filter housing and then continue on with this journey. Um, let me tell you, there's a lot of auto parts stores in LA that don't carry MPT fittings I do not understand. Fittings are like 
I don't know, I almost feel like you should have. Uh, we ended up having to go to a Home Depot and kind of get a tea and kind of make our own thing, but uh, we're going to make it work. We're going to have some fun. Oh, that's probably should have put my phone on mute. All right, guys, so we're going to continue working here and uh, enjoy what you're watching. Search, but you stay lost. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're making this too hard. And I wonder where you are. Mr. P.S. That's the part you always show. You're too curious. Maybe you should take it slow. Mr. P.S. That's the part you always show. You're too curious. Maybe you should take it slow. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up. Well, I'm gonna wrap it up because I got a lot of editing to do, but they're pretty much not set. But we got the oil pressure sensors done on top of the oil pressure housing, filter housing. I mean, uh, Norbert is working on the ignition coils. He's already got the VEMS in the box already, kind of setting it up. So it's actually looking really, really good. It's gonna start cleaning it up. Uh, the coolant system's not done. Stavro has to get a T. And then we can put the radiator back on. But I think tonight we should get some footage of a uh, quit startup, or if not, tomorrow. So if we end up getting startup footage, Stavro will send that to me. If not, we'll, uh, we'll get that tomorrow. But things are looking really good, guys. Tomorrow on tomorrow's agenda, we'll get the car up in the air. We'll do the uh, big brake rotors in the back. I know Stavro ordered from Project B5, so those came in with new pads. Uh, we're going to put those on. So a lot of little things are going to be getting done on this car, but as far as where we're at, this is it for today, and we'll be back first thing tomorrow morning. It is, what time is it now? Six. Six. Still no sleep. <laughs> we'll sleep in a little bit. All right, guys. I'm George. This is Stavros. That's Norbert in the back. This is Malaka Motorsports. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Without